Here's a peek at life around Fringe. We're here with Patrick Gauthier, the community manager yes. for Fringe, and uh, we just kind of want to talk to you about uh, how you got involved with Fringe. Uh, I started as a Fringe artist. Uh, I've been involved with the Fringe since 2002 was my first Fringe show. Uh, and then after that, uh, I did a show in 2002, three, four, for a number of years. And then a few years ago, uh, I was asked if I want to come on and do this job. Uh, so I said, yeah, I love The Fringe. I don't have a show this year. Why not? My name's Tim Oberholzer, uh, and I am uh, uh, acting as Michael Casio uh, in the production of Othello, whereby this gentleman is playing Othello. I'm playing Othello Who in the is? production of Othello. <laughs> I'm Zach Rayner. Uh, yeah, you know, we've been doing this for a while now. It's a really fun experience. Yeah, I'm Anna Lingren. I play Amelia in the show. I'm Freddie. Uh, I play Diva in the OYP show called Sweet Nothing, a show about how showbiz can ruin relationships, but in the end, love conquers all. Othello is the story of this man who's a very, he's a pure man, a very man, a pure of heart, and the story of him as he is twisted and manipulated to think that his wife is this horrible woman, and then eventually in the end, well, I can't, I can't really spoil the story for you, but this man ends up turning the business of his soul from absolute good to the absolute opposite. It's very Shakespearean. Yeah, it's Shakespearean ending. If you, <laughs> and, uh, if you can imagine, it does not end well up, for, any, for any of the characters in the play. Well, actually, that's not true. Well, it ends, ends well. okay for you. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. What makes a quality friend show? Oh, that's such a hard question, right? I mean, I think it's trying to find a formula or build the show. I think it's kind of a, a futile experience, but I think the, the main thing is, I think, passion. You get that passion for the material and for what you're doing. Uh, the shows that I see that I love the most might not be the technically the best shows, they might not have the best acting or the best script, but the performers are really giving it their all. They put their, their entire hearts into it. Um, they just love what they do, and that, that passion and that love of being on stage and of performing translates to the audience. I'm basically involved in French theatre, so I hadn't heard much about Fringe. I was supposed to be involved last year, and that plan because of vacation fell down the drain for myself. Um, so I've had a great experience, a great first experience for myself. Um, for OYP, it's a great way of getting these kids who would potentially one day become these artists that do this as a full-time job or part-time job or whenever they can get a contract and get the feedback they need, get the information they need to be able to pursue what they'd like to do. Uh, this is my first time in Fringe. This is my first time really doing anything that's like not a high school production kind of thing. So it's my first time with a, with a real acting company. It's my first time, it's my first time for everything, which means I am excited, like as they come, you know? We've been acting outside, we've been acting for small audiences, big audiences, whatever audience, we're just performing. And I think that this show gives me a chance to showcase my love for performing for like the first time in a while. So yeah, it's a lottery. So essentially it's open to anyone. There's no restriction. Uh, you enter your name, all the names go in a hat. Uh, Ottawa Fringe is 50% local, 30% national, 20% international. So the bulk of shows come from here and the so positions are held for those companies. So you, you enter, you put your name in the hat, your name gets drawn, you're in or you're not. And then once you get in, you pay your entry fee. It's, I can't remember what it is. Uh, I love it, like 600. Something, it's around 600 bucks or something, but you pay the $600. Uh, and then we give you the tech and the, the box office during the program and you're raring to go. You bring the show, we give you everything else. Uh, it's my first time too, so it's, it's been a phenomenal experience. We've had great audiences that have been able to come out and brave the weather. Like for example, tonight we're a little wet because we were doing a show outside in the rain, in the thunderstorm. It was pretty great. Uh, how about you, Tim? Um, this is my second Fringe, uh, by my first with Salamander. Um, and yeah, having a great time doing some outdoor theater, doing some Shakespeare, which, you know, both are kind of exciting and worth coming to see. And if you don't get pulled in the lottery, if you, can, if you can hustle and find your own venue, then we will put you in the program, we will give you volunteers and do all that same stuff, but you just provide the venue as well. Spotlight On was interesting. Uh, I have a lot of friends in improv, and it, it's a different kind of improv. French and English improv aren't exactly the same. So seeing the difference was a learning experience more than anything for myself. I'm Patrick Bundy, I play Jazz. I'm Vanessa Anson, and I play Link. I'm Gabriel Schultz, and I play Curtis. Uh, I'm Austin Graff, and I play Wayne. And I am we... Moon, please. Moon, please! Us and... <laughs> nine other... Five, seven other people? Oh, no. Two other people. It's a very popular fringe locally. It's a great way for local artists to have a, a chance to do work that they might not be able to do. It's very cheap and accessible. 
uh, and it's also popular on the circuit because we're one of the first stops on the cross-country circuit. So if you're going west, uh, Montreal is the first stop, Ottawa is the second, then you go Toronto, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Edmonton, Victoria, Vancouver. I'm Eleanor Crowder and Mama's Boy is, well Mama's Boy is us having a heck of a lot of fun playing around with a story which is designed to tease, delight and ideally make you think for several days, weeks, months after. We had a bunch of songs. We had three songs from another show that were really fun in the other show, but we didn't want them to die. So we kept them going. And I had Will and Rachel and Bronwyn, who I think are three of Ottawa's finest actors, all of whom sing really well. Uh, the play is about, it's set in South, South London. And um, there's this, the Avalon party, which is headed by this Mr. Avalon, who we never know the name of. And he's, it's this radical right-wing party, which is based off the British National Party in England. And he has, um, his stepson Curtis has been seeing visions of his dead of his dead brother and wants to have a seance and bring his brother's ghost. Contact him. Contact him, yes. See what's going on. He meets all these, there's all these characters in this house. Yeah. Uh, after the Fringe, uh, we take Othello around parks here in Ottawa. Um, over June uh, and oh, then, July. well, yeah, sorry, June, July. June, July. June, July. It's now, June now. In July, um, and uh, at the end of July, uh, we do a week at the National Arts Centre Fourth Stage uh, as well, uh, mm -hmm. which will be a lot of fun. You can access the showtime information on the website, which, which is, is salamandertheater.com. All right, we are with Andrew Snowden, who's an avid Fringe enthusiast. Andrew, how long have you been involved with the Fringe here in Ottawa? Uh, at least since 2009. I uh, started out as a, as a volunteer and then did some reviewing for fullyfringe.ca. Uh, this year I helped the Fringe put together a retrospective booklet on the 15 years of the Fringe Festival amongst many other things. And it's written by Philip Ridley, we should probably say. And been banned in WK. Exactly. It was exactly. banned in WK. In WK. It was banned in WK. Yeah, we're, that, uh, we're the so most controversial fringe show, I think. We're controversial. And this was beginning of February. Slot opened up because we got bumped off the waiting list. And I had the three songs, and I had the actors, and I had an hour to play with. And then I got in a plane and went to Sulu look out. <laughs> And by the time I had a week in the cabin by a lake, I had a story in my head and it came back. <laughs> Every story ever told, that one was entertaining. Which one? Every story ever told. Yeah, I want to see that. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to see when Harry met Harry. Oh, yeah. Kind of have a big crush on this. Yeah, I've heard great things. Oh, here's uh, another member of the cast. This is Ben Dion. What? How you doing? Benjamin Dion. Benjamin, and he plays. Tommy. I've always been uh, interested in theater to some degree. But what really caused me directly to become involved with the Fringe was a friend of mine who's still a volunteer with the Fringe uh, invited me down to the VIP party when I had nothing else to do that day. So I crashed the VIP party and I ended up a volunteer by the end of the night. <laughs> that is, I just fell into it is usually the phrase. It's got songs people wake up singing the next day. People have said so. We, we sing them lots because we like them. But it's got songs people wake up singing. That's cool. A packed audience and standing <laughs> ovation. <laughs> that would be nice. Maybe, yeah. maybe having to go in and bow twice. Yeah, before. yeah. At the beginning, yeah. 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 I doubt it's going to happen, let's be honest. We, How we, about to the tune of other shows you might be looking forward to seeing over the next oh, couple of days? Really cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really, for me, uh, <laughs> when Harry met Harry. When Harry met Harry. When Harry met Harry. And then I saw a play with a really, really good title. It was called, it had like, I think it was called like something with virgins and chainsaws, and that just that title intrigued me. So. That sounds yeah, it's an actual play. It's, it's the venue across from us. So yeah. if you don't want to see Moon, please go to that. But you <laughs> yeah, you should see Moon. Please. There's no reason not to see Moon, please. You know, it's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, it's, it is. It's, it's extraordinary. I, I I heard great things about it. I've had a lot of fun meeting and interviewing the cast. Like just kind of going out there, meeting them, getting to kind of get into their headspace and. It's really inspiring to talk to these guys who are, a lot of these guys just write their own stuff, direct their own stuff, and you know, they make something out of nothing and it's great, it's inspiring. These guys have stories to tell and their stories worth listening to.